is an Emmy and Tony Award winning actress who stars in the new movie Suicide Squad. There you go. Call. But without you minding her, your lady friend stays here strapped to a board in a drug induced coma. They warn me about you. My dumbass didn't believe the stories. Nobody does. Please welcome Viola Davis. <laughs> I gotta say, in that clip, you look spooky right away. I'm a badass. That's what I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, before we get to the movie, congratulations on your Emmy nomination, speaking of badass. Thank you. And, <laughs> and last year, when you won, you yeah. quoted Harriet Tubman. Speaking of I badasses. I did. Yeah. And as I was sitting in my seat, I thought I was negotiating with myself, thinking, it probably won't be a good idea to quote Harriet Tubman at this present moment. And then I remember doing the speech, and my husband afterwards said, You know what, V? I didn't know where you were going. <laughs> but I'm glad you took it home. <laughs> well, now, if, I'm, if I got this right, you're going to be playing Harriet Tubman. I am. Okay. Harriet Tubman's having a moment. She's having a moment right now. Harriet Tubman should have a moment. I mean, listen, if there's anyone who's a true hero, American hero, it's Har Harriet Tubman. I mean, we know... <laughs> we know that she freed the slaves, and, you know, when you think of what's involved with freeing slaves at that time, unbelievable, but she was also involved in the women's suffrage movement. She spearheaded Red Cross. She was the only woman who fought in a military raid, ever. The audience tonight, audience tonight, obviously full of tub maniacs. Yeah. Now, you, uh, she's going to be on the 20 now. Yeah. Is there any, Tubman, now that yeah. you've done a little studying up on her, is there anything, any recommendations on maybe how she should be pictured on the $20 bill? Okay, now, I don't like guns. I told you that, right? You didn't tell me that. Yeah, I don't like guns. But that being said, <laughs> when I had a discussion with the writer, I said, you know what? She, I, I, I want to see her with, with a gun. <laughs> and a big gun, like a shotgun, because I want to hear... And he said, you know, I think a pistol is pretty good. I said, no, 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 a pistol is small. He said, let me show you a picture of the pistol back in the day. That pistol looked like a sword. So I said, OK, I'll keep the pistol. <laughs> so yeah, Harriet with the pistol would be a good picture for the $20 right, bill. Right, the $20 bill like that? You know, that? it's empowering but for women. all the founding fathers are going to get jealous. They're going to want their own gun after that. <laughs> they don't need a gun. They, you know, they have their own thing. I like the idea. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Sure. And Trump talks about his all the time. Now, I like the idea of Harriet Tubman coming in and going Ch -ch -ch, like that, one-handed. I'm here to chew gum and free slaves, and yeah, I'm all out of gum. Ch -ch -ch. <laughs> Put that away someplace. Uh, all right. Let's talk about Suicide Squad. Yes. You play the woman who puts what's the character's name? Amanda Waller. She puts the whole thing together. Yes, she wants she to get the worst of the worst. And create this sort of the squad to get these bad guys to do good things. Yes. Um, you're the ringleader. I am. Were you a ringleader growing up? Did you like have a gang or like make people do things for I you? I had one, one gang member. <laughs> That's a small gang. And, and I just remember his last name, Figuera. Please forgive me. But we had an arm wrestling little um, business going on because he saw that I had big muscles. This was when I was seven years old. He said, Viola, we can make good money off your muscles. Ten cents. We can charge ten cents. I said, OK. He got 50. You know, he got five cents. I got five cents. So we would line everybody up during recess. And he'd line them up. He'd slap them in the head. And he would say, what do you have to say to Viola? They'd call me names. He said, OK, well, she can arm wrestle you, but give me ten cents. And so we'd take 10 cents from each person, and I'd beat the crap out of them. Wow. Yeah, nice 
Nice grip. Nice grip. Nice mm -hmm. grip. Um, it, it, your character uh, is willing to throw people under the bus in this movie. Yes. Get what you want, throw them under the bus. Yes. That's kind of the legend of her. Yes. Do you, you throw anybody under the bus? My sister Anita. <laughs> Older, younger? She's older than I am. Okay. She's tough. She was tough back in the day. She'd grow her fingernails so she'd be a better fighter. Even so though she's, she's a very sweet woman, it sounds real bad, but you had to know the environment. So, it scra so she would scratch people up with her fingernails? She would, at least it was an option. <laughs> but uh, if, I would, if I got like three kids who were coming at me, because I was sort of bullied, even though I loved my childhood, but I was sort of bullied. So if three kids came at me, I would, you know, get nervous. I'd say, I'm going to get my sister Anita after you. And then I'd go home, I'd get Anita and say, Anita, these three kids, they, they were coming after me. You, you, you got to do something. <laughs> and she had this whole method where she would growl and drool. Really? She did it once. It really was very effective. I recommend it. That's less. That's it's an less... answer to no guns. Just drool with a little brick in your hand. Just. Ah! You left the brick out. Yeah, you she left had a the brick. brick. She just went, ah, rah, and drooled. That was it. So you would say, wait for me and my sisters. Wait, my sister's coming. You're not going to deal yeah, with her. Yeah, they were terrified of her. That is less Suicide Squad and more Three Billy Goats Crop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, um, you, uh, you actually own your own production company now, I understand. Juvie Productions. Okay, and you're doing a project. <laughs> if I got this right, you're producing something called American Coco about yeah. an agency that solves, and this is a quote, sticky racial situations. <laughs> um, hit me to the scene. What is the difference between a sticky racial situation and just uh, racism? What's the difference between the two of those? OK, racism probably would be if you, I don't know, denied someone entrance into the bathroom because they were black. That's racist. Yeah. But sticky is like when I was doing a movie and I was doing it with my fro, and this Caucasian woman. You can say that on air. You can yeah, say that on Caucasian air. Yeah, Caucasian woman was, had her fingers in my hair. She said, I'm going to make it really pretty. And so she put some white goo in it, and I wanted to say something. Do you mean literally the goo was colored white or goo only white people would use? <laughs> Goo only white people would use. Okay. She put that and then she took a big spray bottle filled with water and just started spraying my fro with it, with the goo in the hair. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to say, this is not going to work. <laughs> but I knew if I said it that I would be insulting her. So then I went to the set and slowly the sun caught my hair and my whole fro turned white. That's a sticky racial situation. <laughs> because then you got to talk about hair and you got to say, you don't know what to do with my hair. But you, don't, you can't say that because then you insult. That would be American Coco. And American Coco will fix that? She would fix it. She would be my uh, spokesperson. You have lovely hair today. And by the way, when you put water on the fro, if it's this big, it will become this big. <laughs> it shrinks. Well, you learn That's every just day. a little lesson. And steam. It, it, it shrinks. It shrinks. The fro shrinks. It does. Shrink. Is the water cold? Does that make it shrink even more? See, now this is a sticky. <laughs> now, this would qualify as a sticky racial situation. <laughs>